Hello everyone, hope you're all doing well. In this video, we'll be looking at motion tweening, keyframes, and using the video timeline in Photoshop. So while After Effects is probably your best bet for making motion graphics, Photoshop is a good introduction into how After Effects works. You can kind of think of Photoshop as a really pared down version of After Effects. Also, Photoshop is the cheapest of all Adobe apps. So it's nice to see all that you can do before you have to subscribe to the entire Adobe package or to another program. So in this video, we'll be making a video like what we see on screen right now. So in last class, we made a frame animation. And I just made a really quick animation in this example, where it is just two frames and it oscillates between uh, one layer and then the, another layer that has the colors inverted. So it makes it look like the arrows are going inwards. I then just set the timing uh, to 0.2 seconds each. And then afterwards, uh, I have to stop the animation by pressing spacebar. And then I'm just going to convert it into a video timeline. So we just go into the timeline. So again, if you don't see that, just go into window timeline and then click on convert to video timeline. And that should and save it. And that should make it compatible for our video project today. All right, so let's get started. So let's open up the demo file. And we'll see that we have all of our elements that we'll need for our animation. So you can see that we have the white of the eye, the pupil, and the text. All we need to do now is we'll have to place in the frame animation that we just saved. So we'll just go to File, and then we'll just go Place Embedded. And then we'll just put into the background the frame.psg that we just saved. And then after I place that, I'll just double click it to apply it. And I'm just going to move it to uh, just right above the background. All right, so now let's open up the timeline. So let's go to this window and timeline. And then what we'll do is we will create a video timeline. So you should be, you should see something like a frame animation or video timeline, and we want to create a video timeline. So let's click on that and we'll hit create video timeline. So now you can see that our Animation has uh, every all the elements in there, and then the, the place file has the animation in it. So you can just kind of see that it flips between the two colors, and then it goes to nothing. So what we want to do first is we want to establish the length of our video. Since we want this video to loop, we'll copy the back, we'll have the background animation sort of determine the overall length. So we'll take that and we'll just copy this layer. So we'll take this layer and then we'll just drag it onto the new layer icon to make a new layer. And you'll see that it just pops right ahead. So if I move this forward and move the playhead, you can see that the animation continues. So what I would like to do is I want to just turn this to a video group. So what I'll do is I'll just take this layer and I'll just move it down into the same sort of layer as the original one and then and then we'll also take that and we'll just copy and paste it. Uh, just Command C, Command V, or File Edit Copy Paste, just right up there. And then you can kind of see that our animation background sort of uh, repeats a couple of times, just like that. So I don't want this animation to be too long. So three repetitions of the frame animation is good enough for me. So I will take the rest of the layers right here, and I'm just going to make the duration to match up with the pattern of the video group layer, just like that. So that looks perfect, just like that. All right, so now let's move on to the eye. So let's just turn off the surveillance right up here, and then we'll also turn off the pupil for now. And then what I want to do is I want the eye to close and open, then close again, and create a looping animation. So we'll select our eye layer in both the eye layers and in our video timeline right here. And then we are going to have to change the, the shape of it. So you'll see right now we don't actually have the, we can only change the position of passing style. And that's because the eye layer is not a smart object. So what we need to do is we need to select our layer and then we just need to go into the menu in the layer panel and we want to convert it to a smart object, just like that. And then if we open it now, you'll see that we have a transform option instead of a position op option. So what we want to do here is we just want to plop down a keyframe. So we just hit the stopwatch and create a keyframe, which is one of these little yellow, yellow diamonds. And then that just means at this point, we want our eye to be at this stage. So at this stage, it'll be open. Um, so 
I'll pop down a frame, even though I want it, the animation to start with the eye closed, but I'll pop it down and I'll just move it forward. And then I'm just going to move that keyframe forward. I'm just gonna pop down another keyframe right down here. And then now what I'll do is I'll transform it. So it's quite simple. We'll just go into edit and then just free transform. And then we're just going to make this into a line by squishing it. So we'll just hold Apple shift or control shift and to just change to just squish it down. And I'm just going to turn to a really simple line and then I'll hit enter to apply the animation to apply the transformation. So now, now that I know that the start is supposed to be squished into line, and then I know right here it's supposed to be open, then it kind of creates the in-between frames, so tweening between these all these frames. So just like that, it opens. And then if I want to uh, have it close again near, say, the end of the animation, I can just uh, I can just copy this keyframe. So I'll just highlight it, click on it, I'll hit copy. And then I'm going to put a keyframe down uh, near the end, uh, at the end of the animation. And then I'll just plop it down here. And then I'm going to right click on this, anima uh, this keyframe and I'll just paste what I just copied, which is the code sort of state of the first animation. So you see that it opens and then it'll start taking its time to close. So I'll probably, I want it to stay open for a bit as I move the people inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this one when it's all open, I'll hit copy, and then I'm just gonna hit a keyframe kind of right around here, just like that. And then instead of having it somewhat closed, I'm just gonna paste that the, the same state as this keyframe. And then, so it'll go from open, stay open for a while, and then close. All right, so now let's move on to the pupil. So we'll move our playhead back to where our eye is sort of somewhat open, just like that. And then we'll open, uh, we'll open up the pupil layer right here. So let's click on the pupil and then we'll just make it visible. And then what we want to do is we'll scrub forward, uh, forward and backwards. So right now you can see that the pupil sort of sits over top of the eye. And of course we want that to be put inside. So it's is a really easy, technique uh, to just have the top layer sort of get cropped by the bottom layer. And then, so what we can do is just select this one. And all we have to do is go into the menu and create clipping mask, just like that. And then you can see that it gets contained by the layer underneath. So now when it opens up, the eye stays open, the pupil gets cut off by the eye. So it looks like it's staying inside it. And when it closes, it's the same thing. So just like that. So now what we want to do is we want to move this eye left and right. So I want the eye to open up right in the center. And then I want it to move to the left and right. So first off, I'm just going to plop down a keyframe right in the middle because that's where I want it to be. And I want it to stay in the middle. So as I go further, I'll just put in another one. And then now I want to move to the left. So I'll just move scrub forward a little bit and I'm going to move plop down a keyframe. So while I'll have this keyframe selected and the playhead right on top of it, I'm just going to move my pupil layer to the side, just a little bit like that. And then now I want it to move to the move to the right. So I'm just going to scrub forward a little bit more. I'm just going to plop down another keyframe and then I'm just going to tell the computer that I want it to move all the way here. So now you can see that it opens up, it goes left to right, just like that. And then what I want to do is that when the eye starts closing, I want it to be go back to the center. So I'm just going to plop down another uh, keyframe right here. I'm going to go back to when it was at the center uh, right here. So move the playhead and be on top of the keyframe. I'm just copy it. And I'm just going to move back to uh, when the eye starts closing. So as indicated by my lower layer here. And then I'll highlight it and paste it. And I'll just copy the state. So now you can see that it goes, opens left and right, and then back and close, open back and right and close. So that to me is pretty good. You probably want to play around with the timing a little bit. Timing, hit spacebar to just go in between and then to get your timing correct. So to me, that looks all right. So now what I'll do, is I will move on to the text layer, the surveillance layer right up here. Uh, so let us 
pop it open again and then we'll turn it on and then I'll click on make it visible. So same thing with this one. I want it to be cut off by the within the eye. So again, with this one, I just have to select it and then I have to just create uh, a clipping mask just like that. And now you'll see that's contained within the eye just like that. And in this one, instead of having it move, I'm going to play around with the opacity. So just like before, as it opens up the eye, I want the opacity to be 100%. So I'll just move to where the eye is open and I'll just make a keyframe. And then I want to stay opaque until uh, the eye starts closing again. So I'll just scroll down to just see where the eye closes right here. And then I'm just going to click another keyframe just like that. And then it'll stay. And then now I know between here and here, it'll stay 100% opacity. So I'm just going to scrub to the beginning. And I'm just going to plop down a keyframe. But here, I want the opacity to actually be zero. So I'll take that down to zero. And then now you'll see that it sort of gradually fades in. Then it stays 100% opaque. And then as it closes, I'm going to go to the very end. I'm just going to hit another keyframe. And then I'm going to drag that one to zero as well. You can also copy and paste the keyframes as well. But uh, since we're only changing one sort of attribute, it's just easy to do. It's easier to do it either way. So just like that. All right. So now we can hit play. And then you can see our whole animation come together. You can also animate styles in, in Photoshop. So say you want to animate a drop shadow. Uh, you can also do that as well. I'm not going to do that in this video, uh, but I will apply a bit of an inner glow, inner shadow to the inside of my eye just to give it a bit of effect. And yeah, that looks all right. So maybe I can make it a little bit uh, darker, a little bit bigger, just maybe like that for some drama. And then and I'll hit play. And then now you can see that the eye opens, moves around, and then closes. So just like that. So that's how you use keyframes and animate using motion tweening in Photoshop using the video timeline. Hope you found that helpful, and I hope you incorporate this into your next Photoshop project. Thanks for watching. Bye.